Cardano. Hi Leslie. Good to see you, Ivy. Great. We are all here. Let's go. Hey guys. I'm Ivy. What's up? I'm Dan. And I'm Leslie. We've been waiting for you. Yes. We are going to present a little training lesson on video capture of lectures with iPhones. Like a little reverse mentoring. We think that videos for class lectures could be useful. Especially when there is a lot of material and the lectures go so fast. I am saturated after about 20 minutes. And I start to lose concentration when there is so much to absorb at one time. So, let's get started. Okay, we have already set up the tripod at the back of the room. It has a special holder for the iPhone. Dan is going to set up the iPhone on the tripod. We made sure that it was placed far enough back so that it captured everything at the front of the room. Dan, be sure and put the iPhone into airplane mode so a call does not interrupt the class or stop the recording. I'm doing it right now. Now, we need to pair a Bluetooth wireless keyboard with the iPhone. This will let us start and stop the recording with the volume key on the keyboard. Nobody has to stay with the iPhone and operate it. It is hands-free. It lets us break a long lecture into short segments that makes for better video learning tools. Yeah, short segments of the lesson are put into separate videos. This makes the videos convenient for studying. I can view them at my own pace. Okay, Ivy. The pairing number to type into the keyboard is 0160. Be sure and hit the return key. Got it. Great. The keyboard is paired with the iPhone. Now, Ivy press the volume up key. Okay, it works. Press it again to stop recording. Thanks. Now, we can make short videos of one long lecture. Each video can be a learning module. Way to go. Dan, you can put the iPhone into its holder on the tripod and level the iPhone. Okay. Dan, are you using the iHandy Level app? Yes. I will turn the phone sideways and level it. I want to align it so the side of the blackboard appears straight. You got it? Yes. Now I will lock it down. Have you plugged the microphone in yet? Are you using the wireless lavalier or the small condenser mic? I am plugging in the wireless lavalier microphone now. It has much better sound quality. Did you see that demonstration of the microphones? Yes. Let's show everybody that video demonstration. The iPhone is a smartphone device. The built-in microphone is good for cellular voice communications and near-field speakerphone uses. The iPhone's microphone is not very effective for recording classrooms or other situations with high ambient noise conditions. It loses quality when the audio sources are further than 10 to 15 feet away. There are several solutions to address this audio problem. A small condenser microphone can be used for better audio capture with the iPhone. It is small, convenient, easy to use, and inexpensive. A wireless lavalier microphone is the ideal solution. It provides crystal clear audio in most conditions. The best wireless microphones use ultra high or UHF frequency bands. These UHF frequencies are less susceptible to other radio and broadcast interference. 
The following examples provide a demonstration between the iPhone's built-in microphone, the Ed2G microphone, and a Shure wireless microphone. Hear and decide for yourself. This is the built-in microphone at 10 feet. This is the Edutige microphone at 10 feet. This is the built-in microphone at 20 feet. And this is an Edutige at 20 feet. So this is the wireless microphone at 30 feet. Sound makes a big difference. If you can't hear the narration, the video is useless. I know. Do you want to lock the focus and exposure on me? Sure. Stand still for a minute. Did you guys see the video demonstration of the difference it makes to lock the focus? Wow, I didn't realize the iPhone could focus that sharp. Let's show it to everybody else. The iPhone's camera may be small, but it can produce sharp video at high definition quality. This demonstration used a potted plant 15 feet in the background from the textured glove. The camera is designed to focus on the most dominant object in the viewfinder. This can create problems when the principal subject is not the dominant subject from the camera's perspective, based on light and placement in the foreground. By locking the focus on a specific area at a set distance, the presenter will always be sharp and clear on the videos. Problems also can occur when the lights are dim or when brightly lit slides are projected on the screen behind the presenter. To avoid these problems, the automatic exposure and automatic focus can be locked by touching the presenter on the iPhone screen. Overly lit exposures can be compensated by having the presenter stand in a dark place away from the slide projection screen and locking the exposure and focus. Online classes, we use synchronous and asynchronous, um, but we're meeting online in a virtual classroom. Uh, it's asynchronous one day a week, meaning it's already archived for you. It's synchronous another day. Um, meaning it's live conversation, but then you come to class, the blended part is you come to class to take the tests, okay, or to meet face to face if you need to talk with me about stuff. Okay, so it, I've got kind of the range of blended learning, and blended learning can be a range. You can have it where you use just a little bit of technology and mostly traditional, or it's mostly technology with a little bit of traditional, okay. It depends on what you're using in the content. And, and your audience. That was special. We got a glimpse of blended learning. Are you locked in on me yet? I'm locked in on you. Smile. Great. We are ready to roll. Lights. Camera. And action. Okay, we are ready for class. After class. We will show everyone how to edit the video and upload it for viewing. That's a great idea. Professor Lane will appreciate the help. All Professor Lane has to do is to put on her wireless microphone and hit the volume up key on the keyboard. We'll be back after class. <laughs> <laughs>